Hey gang, I am Blunty. This is the Logitech PowerShell, and it's one of the first new gamepad controllers for iPhones and iPod Touches, now that, at last, iOS has natively built-in support for game controllers. And that took Apple a ridiculously long time to get around to cramming in there, seeing as how popular gaming on these devices is, and how monstrously craptacular a lot of on-screen control systems are for certain types of games. Now, in the past, I've looked at a few similar devices like the Moga Pro and Moga Pocket, both of which are for Android devices, but the Logitech PowerShell is a little bit different, aside from being that it's for Apple devices. It's better in some ways and not so much in others. For a start, it's a hardwired device, so while the Moga controllers connected via Bluetooth, which meant they needed their own battery power, the PowerShell connects directly to your iPhone or iPod Touch via the Lightning connector. But the Logitech device does actually still have its own rechargeable battery on board, but instead of chewing up power itself, this device actually powers up your iPhone, keeping you gaming for longer. Which is a handy thing, because as I'm sure a lot of you have experienced, the more graphically intense games out there in particular will drain your phone's battery faster, so being able to top it up while you play is pretty sweet. It's a 1500mAh battery, so it won't get you a full charge, but it's enough for a good top up. The PowerShell is much slimmer than the Moga pads and is designed to encompass your device like a case. It's very slim and quite light and it gives you easy access to the hardware controls. It even has a cutout for the rear-facing camera on your iPhone. The control layout is the basic setup. One thumb pad, four face buttons, a pause button and two shoulder buttons. And for many types of games, this works quite nicely indeed. The buttons are nice. It's a good spacing and they feel nice and responsive. The same goes for the shoulder buttons. They've got a nice click to them, but a pleasant spring to them too. It's not too clicky, not too spongy. It's a really nice tactile balance. The thumb pad is a bit less impressive, I'm afraid to say. For my tastes, it's a bit too spongy. There is a tactile click to the directions, but overall it's pretty mushy, and in some types of games that can be a bit of a killer, like Pac-Man for instance, which you really, really, really need a very crispy and highly responsive control to play properly. On the other hand, in most other games I tested, it felt absolutely fine. It was responsive enough to get good control in races, no real issues weaving through traffic or making turns, and the overall feel of the controller shell in hand was really very pleasant. It has a nice balance to it, the overall layout is very comfortable and very natural feeling with everything falling right under thumb and finger just as it should, and the subtle curves and texture of the grips on the back meant a very secure feeling grip. Some other game styles that work particularly nicely too include the RPG and old school console hack and slash type games. They in particular benefit hugely from having proper controls instead of the truly awful poke and swipe crap we've all had to deal with until now. Of course, having only a singular thumb pad and lacking a pair of analog sticks is not ideal for twin stick shooters or FPSs and the like. However, even they still benefit noticeably. Here, for example, where the thumb pad moves me around and I still have to use this screen to aim, but the button's for all other actions. And yes, that's a bit of a compromise, but it's still a much, much, much better experience than the miserable screen obscuring compromise of using on screen twin sticks and auto fire modes and all that kind of crap. For me, games like this are next to unplayable without a proper controller. Overall game support is still relatively thin because the built-in gamepad support is pretty fresh for iOS 7, but support is growing fast and I'm very much looking forward to many games that were once severely crippled or completely broken thanks to their compromised on-screen control systems which will now become viable and playable and actually fun once more now that iOS supports proper hardware game controls at last. I think maybe the asking price of the Logitech PowerShell of just under 130 Aussie dollar dues is a bit on the high side if I'm honest, but it is from Logitech and I've been using their gear for well, decades now I guess without any problems at all. I've never once been let down by anything with a Logitech brand on it. So there is a big mountain of trust in their build quality and reliability there, and that's a big deal. So, all in all, the end story is this. The Logitech PowerShell is a good option for those of you wanting basic hardware controls and a built-in backup battery, and all in a package that doesn't even stop your device from being completely pocketable while still inside the controller shell, and, you know, that's handy too. Thanks for watching. I am Blunty, and I will catch you next time.